So, Daddy, won't you take me back to Marylinburg County, out by the Green River, where paradise lay? I'm sorry, my son, you're too late in asking. Mr. Peabody's cold train is all the other way. Well, sometimes we travel right down the Green River to the abandoned old prison by Smelled like snakes and we shoot with our pistols and empty pop bottles. Oh, 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 so what do you think? I think it's wonderful that we're letting our community so know what's Daddy, going on. Take me back we want to protect our neighbors from losing their wealth. The well, thanks for all your work. You really are starting to put it all together. And uh, congratulations on a great turnout today. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. My name is Steve Millard. I live up off of Burma, which is probably about a mile away from where we're at right now in front of the mine. Um, I've had concerns about water, water issues with the wells uh, declining. And so, and I'm not the only one, a lot of people are. We've been in through drought situations here and now they're talking about the mine and the mine reopening. And so my concern is if you want to get people involved in the process, especially of, of trying to stop the mining and to, they, they need to have skin in the game. So my idea of skin in the game would be to, to get the records of where uh, the mine tunnels are that go up underneath people's properties. And so if they could see, here's where the mines are, and there's some of the mine tunnels are close to me, then that would give them skin in the game because actually from the other mines that failed, we already know that they're very deep underground and all they have to do is, is cross some of the rock that creates the fit that the fissures are in that brings the water up for your wells and all of a sudden the water goes, the water table goes down and also uh, once they damage those fissures, uh, then the mine uh, chemicals that they had used, I don't know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, whenever those mines were operational, get in the water and they poison your wells. And even if you did have water, you wouldn't be able to use it. So this is a well-known fact of how it goes. But my intention is to get people to realize that it's not an issue on Greenhorn and Bennett. This is an issue that probably affects everybody within a, a facility, uh, a large area around the facility that they're trying to do and not just uh, to that one a specific place. And so that's the way I think it would be. So we need to make people aware about that. But also you were saying about uh, local government and boom and bust. We have about a minute left. Can you comment on that? Oh, yes. I, I moved here probably uh, 10 years ago. And, and just prior to that, I actually went to the county and talked to them about a position as a building inspector. I have a degree in that. And they were uh, willing to hire me. Uh, however, they had just done some hiring pri uh, prior to, to that, and I realized that that wasn't going to happen in a timely manner, and plus the salary wasn't all that great. So I had to stay where I was. But then the housing market collapsed, and then they ended up laying off all of the people that they had hired. And that's where I got the idea that this is a boom and bust economy that this county actually operates on. And so that's an issue with them. They don't have a revenue issue because all of the retirement homes, the people that have that have retired own homes all the way from here to Auburn. And it's a lot of homes. You actually, if you go on a Zillow website or truly, I don't know if that's still in business or not, but you find out that there are many, many, many homes, hundreds of homes that go all the way back from here to Auburn. And so all that revenue from your property taxes comes into this county. If they don't have funds to, to repair the roads or do anything they're doing, it's because they're operating on boom and bust. And so... And mismanagement. Well, and, and part of that mismanagement would be the same thing that we discussed before about managers' salaries and how they get them jacked up. Actually, uh, 
CalPERS had told me at one point that the reason for, uh, they call it pension spiking, which isn't the same as what we're talking about, but it's kind of all related, is that there are managers that do that. Only managers can can change records and you know falsify information that way and, and do it. It's not rank and file employees ever. And that even 70% of Highway Patrol go out on disability retirement. That, that's a whole lot of wow. folks. First of all, I want to congratulate everybody for showing up today. I think this is probably the biggest show of, of unity and togetherness I've saw in our very eclectic community uh, in a long time. So I want you all to give yourself a pat on the back and a big shout out for showing up. And as you may or may not know, it's going to take more than just doing protests to really make a difference to shut down the potential of the Idaho Maryland mine from reopening. So I want to give a lot of acknowledgement to uh, who I first met, Michael Shea, and also Christy, and all the people from CEA. Let's give these guys a nice round of applause. They're working on the piece on a lot of the complicated uh, parts that are part of the legal piece. My contribution has been every uh, week, every Wednesday, I've been holding public meetings in Pioneer Park uh, between 6.30 uh, and about 8 o'clock, and we've been onboarding a lot of people. Uh, I want to I wanna shout out, there he is, Tony Lorio, who I first met. Did you find your German Shepherd yet, Tony? <laughs> So, you know, it really, the reason I want to speak is because it's going to take everybody doing whatever you can to stop this uh, nefarious, horrible idea from happening in our community. And it's going to take everybody, whether it's showing up at a protest, getting educated, inviting your best friends and neighbors to the next protest, writing letters, and doing all the various things it takes to have a successful campaign. Right now, I'm currently working in opposition about the Sacramento River Delta tunnels. Now, if you haven't heard about it, that's the big juggernaut that could actually have a huge impact on our entire watershed from Mount Shasta to Sacramento. I've been working on that for three years, and we're up against some very powerful forces. How many of you believe that our leadership will naturally and humanistically and compassionately do the right thing? If you think they're going to do the right thing, raise your hand. I want, I want to see the crowd. Show the crowd. How many of you believe that our leadership will do the right thing? Well, there you go. So what we have to do is we have to do what we've always done and hold public town halls, protests, and show our opposition to that. And to tell you the truth, we have to put their feet to the fire of accountability and liability for what they're uh, going to decide on. The fact that five people can make a decision that will affect the livelihood of tens of thousands of people is absolutely criminal. It's a broken, old, colonial, corporate-based our government is a corporation, and under the Constitution, we all have rights to liberty, pursuit of happiness, for clean air and clean water. So what is happening here is not just criminal, but it's absolutely unconstitutional. You guys believe that? So the corporation of Nevada City, the corporation of Nevada County, they are corporations that are trying to exercise dominion and control over our community because it's going to take all the different aspects, the, li the li legislation, the litigation, the activism, and the education. So I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate all of you. Thank you for showing up. This is the first drop of water in a bucket that we have to keep adding to. We know that we all wrote letters, right? We all wrote letters to the soups to tell them about our opposition. And now we're waiting for the environmental impact review to come back. After that comes back in, we have 45 days for public comment. So we're not waiting for the wave and the lull and the up and down. We have to keep our community engaged. We have to keep everybody educated. That's a lot of work. We have to keep people notified of what's happening. And if it comes down to it, we're going to have to be able to start holding events with literally over a thousand people. I, I, I love the turnout today, but I will say, um, based on how this will impact our community, I think it's anemic to what we need to do in the future. But I do want to thank Itera, where is she? I want to thank Itera for helping to put this together. I want to thank the collaboration, again, of CEA, of, 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 of myself holding public forums. 
also of the Alliance for Resilient Communities, also of Tony who uh, and Michael Shea and Christy and all the people who are showing up. I want to thank this gentleman right here, Jerry Brown. Raise, well, raise what hand you can, Jerry. Jerry's new to our community, and he was so passionate about this, he put together the talking points on the sheet of paper that everybody needs to know to talk intelligently to stop the mind. We can't just say we don't want it. It's a bad idea. So before I finish, one other person I want to acknowledge right here to my right, he's going to raise his hand. This is Lou Casabianca of the Alliance for Resilient Communities who create the Empowered Nevada County website. Let's give him a nice round of applause. He, he has donated hundreds of hours to have a community website where we can put in letters and ideas and also working, what's important, we have to all work in tandem together. If we all try to do this alone, it's gonna be harder to be successful. So there's been a lot of meetings, there's been a very strong core of group that are working together on this. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna testify right now, I'm not counting on um, anemic, impotent, uh, politically erectile dysfunction leadership to do the right thing. So I wanna ask you today, we're, we're, start, we're starting the movement, continue to activate people, send out the letters, educate your community. There's gonna be more actions and events coming up. There's gonna be a lot of media, radio. We're making our local issue a statewide issue and a national issue, and we're gonna bring a lot of attention to what is happening here. And again, we're gonna hold the decision makers' feet to the fire because they are accountable for what happens. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah! So we need to hold these people accountable. So I wanna thank all of you Make sure you're part of the communication network through CEA, through the Empower Nevada County. I want to thank all of you for showing up and for finally making a stand. I think this mine actually could be the one thing that galvanizes our community beyond all the division that we've seen over the last few months about masks and no masks and defund and fund and all the different other agendas are happening. This could be the watershed moment that brings us all together and shows the world the strength and the unity that we have here in this city of gold and light, and I'm not talking gold from the ground, I'm talking hearts of gold, of the people that are here that are willing to make a stand and defend our constitutional and human rights. So thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, Itera, and we hope to see you all soon at the next action.